Pokemon exists because Junichi Masuda sought to recapture the feeling of exploring and capturing bugs. These origins can be considered to be driven by entomology, that is, zoology concerned with the study of insects. In this video, I thought it'd be fun to take an armchair entomological, and I'm a chemist, approach to Pokemon, highlighting the insects that bug types are based on in the Kanto region, trivia surrounding them, and also trivia surrounding those Pokemon. At the time of recording, there are 1,015 Pokemon, and 93 of them are bug types. Not counting Mega Evolutions or alternate forms that just give the bug type. Of those 93, there are 84 I consider to be arthropods, two that are mollusca, one a fungus, one virus, one reanimated fossil robot, one reanimated insect shell, two aliens, and one dinosaur. Within the umbrella of arthropods, I've classified nine arachnids, 63 insecta, all pterygata, four crustaceans, five myropods, and three isopods. In this video, I'll be covering trivia about the 10 pterygata insecta bug types in Generation 1. There are some obvious inspirations, but some entries are educated conjecture. Hopefully the difference will be clear, but feel free to comment if you have any questions. I'm leaving out Paris and Parasect because they're crabs infected with fungus, and that'll be better for a separate video. Now, you were probably wondering earlier about what a pterygata insect is. Well, a pterygata is a subclass of insecta within the class insecta, which is part of the phylum Arthropoda. Those designations are all a part of biological taxonomy, which is defined as the scientific study of naming, defining, and classifying groups of biological organisms based on shared characteristics. We'll kick things off with the butterflies. There are three Pokemon associated with the life cycle of a butterfly in Kanto. Caterpie, Metapod, and Butterfree. Caterpie is visually similar to the Asian Swallowtail, Western Tiger Swallowtail, and Spicebrush. Spicebush, that, that word's giving me a lot of trouble today. Spicebush Swallowtail, Caterpillar. Due to its green body, yellow eye spots, and red osimeterium, which is an organ used for secreting odor, primarily for defense. The Asian Swallowtail Caterpillar can retract its osimeterium, and usually only brings it out when it's agitated. This behavior is not replicated by Caterpie. We just never see it go back inside. Until Pokemon Platinum when Caterpie could learn Bug Bite, the only damaging move it could learn was Tackle. Because of this, it's unable to do any damage to Ghost-type outside of using Struggle. It is impossible to complete a Generation 1 game using only Caterpie or Metapod since Struggle couldn't actually hit Ghost-types in the first games. Metapod appears to be based on a butterfly chrysalis, closely resembling that of a cabbage white butterfly, but it's not a cocoon. While those terms are often used interchangeably, a chrysalis refers to the hard and stiff body of the butterfly pupa. On the other hand, a cocoon is the external structure formed by the larva to safeguard itself at the time of the pupal phase. <laughs> Puberty, am I right? The cabbage white butterfly lays 300 to 400 eggs, and the larval stage is considered to be a voracious pest and can do a lot of harm to agriculture. Bulbapedia reports that in the Space World 97 Super Game Boy demo version of Pokemon Gold, Metapod had a unique orange sprite that is exclusive to the demo. But the demo was actually leaked online and is preserved online. And the sprite database for the demo on the cutting room floor depicts Metapod with its iconic green shell. For the majority of Kanto Pokemon, they maintain their sprites from Pokemon Yellow, including Metapod. And in the writing of this video, I was not able to find this orange Metapod sprite image. The shiny sprite of Metapod is orange, so maybe this was an instance of a shiny appearing? It's unlikely that this was an instance of shinies, because while the form is implemented in that demo, people were able to find out that 
It works differently in the demo and all green Pokemon are given a gray shiny. Butterfree appears to be based on the black veined white butterfly or Aporia Critegi. Aporia meaning doubt in Latin and Critegi meaning of Critegus, which is the scientific name of the hawthorn flower, which is its host plant. When this butterfly hatches from its chrysalis, it emits a blood red discharge liquid called meconium. That marks the tree where it is located. In England, when this butterfly was commonly found, it was thought that this was a divine sign or a bad omen for the populations and their harvest. It's often shared as trivia that Butterfree didn't learn bug moves until Generation 3 in the form of Silverwood, but its pre-evolutions learns String Shot, which is a bug move, so I'd argue that's deceptive. Butterfree was the first Pokemon, though, to have an alternate colored form, with the pink Butterfree in the anime. This instance predates Shinies, and the shiny form of Butterfree is not pink. It's hideous. Let's talk about bees, baby. No birds here. Weedle and Kakuna are within the evolutionary cycle of Beedrill, but don't exhibit bee-like tendencies. Weedle is described to eat leaves and shoot silk in the Pokedex. This is more similar to a moth larva than a bee larva. But moths don't have stingers. I'll have to generally regard Weedle as being based on a stinging caterpillar, though those don't have stingers. They don't. I, I could be wrong, but I really don't think they do. You may be wondering, caterpillars can sting me? Yes, some can. But caterpillar sting poisoning is rare outside of your allergies, but may cause shortness of breath. Poison control recommends avoiding touching brightly colored caterpillars with spines. spines. In the manga, Giovanni's first Pokemon was a Weedle that evolved into a Beedrill he used throughout the manga. This is interesting, as he never uses a Beedrill in the mainline games or the anime, or really any other depiction. Kakuna is hard to categorize because it's visually similar to the pupa stage of a V, but it's commonly depicted as hanging, which is more similar to a butterfly chrysalis. But usually this is pretty dangerous for a cocoon. Cocoons can be found attached to tree trunks, though. The sprite for Kakuna in the original game, Red and Blue, has little arms that are not featured in later games or art, except for one off-brand card that isn't the type of cards people care about. It's not observed in the animations. Just thought that was interesting. In name and Pokédex entry, Beedrill is based on a bee. The shiny form of Beedrill is green, which seems okay because it's similar to the green sweat bees. Green sweat bees, and sweat bees in general, don't have a hive, which I thought that was like part of being a bee. They build nests in the ground, which are communal. I could not find an official depiction of Beedrill in a hive. Beedrill's signature move used to be Twin Needle, but in Generation 5, Escavalier gained the ability to learn it. Something fun about Pokemon is that when a move is exclusive, it inevitably is not, unless you're Smeargle. Venonat's inspiration is ambiguous. Venonat is commonly argued to be based on a flea, likely for its agile nature, but fleas don't grow into moths, and this is speculation. There are caterpillars with venomous hair that grow into moths, but Venonat visibly is not a caterpillar. We'll use this opportunity to discuss fleas. Aside from the basis in the chili peppers, large and armored prehistoric fleas were once found. They are not believed to have been able to jump. An additional fact is that modern fleas can last four days without a host after they emerge from a host, but can last 155 days if they remain dormant in their cocoon. Because fleas have cocoons too, people. In Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, the gym leader Kofu's wallet has a Venonat design. Where can I buy one of those? This is not at, nobody sponsored this video. Uh, that's not an advertisement. 
If you used the internet in the 2010s, you've probably seen a popular photo postulating that Venom Moth is based on the Venezuelan Poodle Moth. Visually, they're similar. I'll give you that. But functionally, the Venezuelan Poodle Moth is not known to be poisonous and was only discovered briefly in 2009 with no known encounters since. To that end, poisonous moths are rare. Did you know that the term software bug originated from a moth being stuck in a Harvard computer? Did you also know that Sabrina, the psychic type gym leader in Kanto, uses a venom moth even though Venomoth is a bug poison type. This was only in her red, blue, and green appearance, and in Fire Red and Leaf Green. In other games, she does not use it. Scyther, it's, it's a praying mantis, resembling the European mantis. Something cool about mantises, manti, is that the conclusive classification of praying mantis morphology was noticeably filled with gaps and contradictions until 2017 when a 100 page manual of praying mantis morphology, nomenclature, and practices was published to alleviate this. It's available in PDF form for free and contains a cool fact. The Uthake, or mantis egg, has many variations of structural properties across the species that allow for attachment to a variety of surfaces. Something cool about Scyther and all of its evolutions is that they all have the same base stat total. Few Pokemon do this so far. And usually, you know, when a Pokemon evolves, you think their base stats are gonna change. So it kind of suggests that the evolutions are just different types of praying mantises or reallocation of the manti that was already there. Pinsir is very similar to the stag beetle, Lucanus, that word, because of its horns. It's the horns. Stag beetles begin as a larva and can stay in that stage for up to six years. They also go through a cocoon to become a beetle. I didn't know that, that before writing this video. Maybe that's something I never learned about in school and the majority of beetle depictions just haven't included this. Did you know that larvae for beetles go through a cocoon? It must all be underground or something, I don't know. Pinsir itself has never seen competitive viability. But Mega Pinsir sees a lot of play in Generation 6 competitive tier over you. That wraps up every bug type in Kanto that's based on a real insect. The videos for other generations are currently written and being produced, but if you have any bug facts you'd like to share, I may include them in future videos, so feel free to comment them. This project is entirely self-funded and has taken months of work and research to write and film and edit, and I'm just putting it out there to educate people with trivia about Pokemon and also trivia about real life bugs. If you'd like to see more projects like this, please consider supporting my Patreon. I don't believe in paywalling content, so supporting won't give you access to anything exclusive, except for my thanks and more videos that are public. If you are still interested in zoology video content and you've run out of my videos, I still recommend Lindsay Nicole's channel. She's really good at talking about animals. And if you'd be interested in learning more about the convergence of game entities and entomology, I recommend Ristic Studies video about spiders and Magic the Gathering. In between uploads, I tend to stream. So if you ever want to pop on and just tell me you had a great day, feel free to subscribe. I hope you have a great day, though, from the bottom of my heart. Bye.